Hi, welcome to this video tutorial. In this video I'm going to talk about using Cubase as a VST host for Sibelius. If you've seen my previous tutorials, you'll know I was using Bidule as a VST host and this was working quite well but I was getting some pops and clicks and dropouts on big orchestral pieces and after a bit of investigating I found out um, this was being caused by Rewire. So in order to get rid of Rewire I started using Jack Audio Connection Kit which is like a free version of Rewire made by some Linux guys Anyway, that didn't work very well for me, so I decided to try running Cubase in 64-bit mode and using it as a VST host and remove both Bejewel and Rewire from the equation. As I'll explain in this video, you'll see how I did it and the problems I came across and how I solved them. So here's my new Cubase template. I have a load of MIDI tracks for each instrument of the orchestra and uh, in sections, as the orchestra would be. You can use instrument tracks if you want, although I find they use more resources, especially when you have this many, and seem to crash Cubase quite a bit more. And uh, in the instrument rack you'll see I've loaded up several instances of Play 64-bit. Let's drag that across. And I have two instances of Play for each section of the orchestra. I do this so I can split my VST usage across my CPU cores more effectively and uh, make better use of the resources. Also it means, if I show you in the browser, I'm only using seven, well, seven channels in this one and yeah, seven channels in that one as well. So I have more channels if I decide I need more instruments, if I want to use the um, mod wheel patches, things like that. And now if I show you my Sibelius template, so this is the orchestral template I use with the template in Cubase. So, pretty basic. Um, I'll show you the instruments, standard orchestral instruments, really. Um, selection of percussion, and I can add more to this. Take it away. That's just sort of what I start off with. Um, if you've seen my previous tutorial where I was using Bejewel, you'll see it's pretty much the same as this. The only difference is in the playback configuration, I've just adjusted these MIDI channels here to match up to these MIDI channels here. So it's, it's pretty much the same. Right, so now if I go back to that other file I had open, I'm just going to play back the flute. You hear it just rings constantly and pressing escape doesn't do anything. Going up to um, all notes off doesn't do anything. So the only way to do is to go into Cubase and hit reset. And I couldn't work out what was causing this, why the notes would hang. So I messed around with the I'll just go back to Cubase. I messed I messed around with the MIDI monitors in Cubase and the ones in Bejewel actually to see what happens when you actually press stop in Sibelius. And I figured that it was actually every time you, you stop player back in Sibelius it sends a CC one two one message. And uh, I think that's the reset controller message. And Cubase just seems to ignore that. Um you can actually show you quickly and demonstrate it in here if you're going to the piano roll and you select the reset controller and you tell it to play a note and then you say stop playing the note there Cubase just ignores it however if you use the 123 123 all notes off Cubase stops when it gets the 123 so I figured I'll use the input transformer to convert the incoming CC121 message to a CC123 message. So I set this up in the input transformer, logical editor, and turned it on, transform, okay that should work. Hit playback, and you'll see it doesn't work. And I, for a while I couldn't work out what the problem is. I've spent ages messing around with this trying to get to work. And after a lot of fiddling around it turned out that I was doing it a bit backwards. And what I should have been using is that there's actually a plugin for each MIDI channel called Transformer. Which essentially looks the same as you can see there. And this is what I should have been using. So I set it up the same and I'll drag that across. And yeah, all it does is it takes the incoming CC121, changes it to 123, and it stops that those hanging notes. 
which makes it work fine. So if I demonstrate this now, and now the note turns off as it's supposed to when you hit stop. So great, one problem solved. So the next problem I had was um, all these instruments here, um, pretty much the ones I've highlighted, are all coming in on the virtual MIDI cable one. And so each one I set the appropriate channel number here. But it doesn't actually seem to make a difference. And I couldn't work out why. So if I was getting information through for the uh, flute here, it was also going to all the other instruments on the same MIDI cable. So I was getting all sorts of weird problems. And I found out the solution was not to use this. I can't remember why, but it wasn't to use that. You've got to go into the logical editor again, and you've actually got to just forward each channel so you, and that's it just send that particular channel through it's actually built in here if you just go into channel filtering you select pass whichever channel you need so that's channel two as it should be piccolo should be channel one channel one and the only thing to remember is to make sure you actually turn it on here and set this to filter instead of uh, transform and you've got to do that for each instrument so what I did I made a lot of blank MIDI tracks and set them from 116 and then just copied and pasted them and set them up for whichever um, channel I wanted. Another thing, um, you might not know this, if you select several channels and say you want to set them all to input 2, rather than going through them one by one and selecting input 2, you can actually highlight load them and press shift and alt. I'm not sure what it is on a Mac, but on the PC it's shift and alt and select say, whichever channel you want and all of them will change to that which is just quite a useful little shortcut. Anyway, I hope that makes some sense and uh, you get something out of it. I'm going to play back a quite MIDI heavy track now just through um, Sibelius to demonstrate how this setup works and hopefully it won't have any dropouts or anything. If you have time, please visit my website. It's www.totalcomposure.com. Thank you for watching this video and if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the box below. And if you have another way of doing the things I've shown in this video please share them either via the comments or as a video response thanks again and enjoy this uh, piece of music by alan menken <laughs>